Imagine a supply chain so complex that the final mile is not one mile, but rather 10,000 miles in the vacuum of outer space. Let's unpack space supply chains. In the past decade, there has been a tremendous growth in space exploration, which has only increased the need for logistics, not just on Earth, but in space as well. The future of aerospace looks incredibly exciting, but what does that mean for supply chains? First, let's explore the terrestrial space-related supply chains to better understand the overall industry. The actual development and manufacturing of space technology, such as rockets and satellites, have highly regulated supply lines. In the United States, for example, the International Traffic and Arms Regulations, or ITAR, is intended to restrict and control the export of military-related technologies to safeguard national security and further U.S. foreign policy objectives. Enacted in 1976 during the Cold War, ITAR is the primary reason aerospace supply chains are so stringent. It affects suppliers downstream and upstream, even down to Tier 3 manufacturers that are often smaller businesses. NASA alone has over 12,000 suppliers for its space missions, notably Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. Contractors in the sector have to be extremely careful in ensuring their end-to-end -end supply chains are ITAR compliant, which for many businesses bears a significant legal and financial burden. The US government has received criticism from corporations and academia alike concerning how harmful the restrictions are for business, research and development, and international collaboration. For example, when satellite technology had been subjected to ITAR from 1999 to 2009, the U.S. share of global satellite manufacturing had been cut in half with an estimated loss of $21 billion in revenue during that period. In response to concerns on overregulation, the United States Department of State reclassified satellites and related components under the Export Administration Regulations, or EAR which helped loosen restrictions on 36 countries. As the space industry continues to grow, supply chain managers' experience in ITAR and equivalent regulations across Europe and Asia will be crucial toward ensuring orders are delivered not just on time, but in compliance with the law. Now stepping back and looking at the larger picture, what about supply chains beyond the sky? In a not-so-distant future, humans will likely be colonizing the solar system. In order to have interplanetary bases that can sustain human life, a steady supply of food, water, fuel, and equipment will all be paramount to further expanding humanity's reach for the stars. There has been some interesting research in this field. The Space Logistics Project at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology sought to develop a comprehensive framework to enable sustainable space exploration of our solar system. One of those programs was the Houghton Mars Project. In 2005, a group of researchers from MIT went on an expedition to a remote station on Devon Island in Canada. This is the largest uninhabited island in the world. There, they investigated the applicability of the site as a simulation for planetary base, micro and macro logistics, as well as recorded the challenges of supply chains to remote environments and collected data for modeling and planning. At the base, the researchers also developed an inventory control model for thousands of items, from fuel to satellite communication equipment, that aimed to significantly improve the then-current taxonomy at the International Space Station. The inventory on a multinational, multi-organizational space station is a massive coordination effort. One single mistake in the inventory data, whether in oversupply or undersupply, could cause catastrophic, life-threatening conditions to the astronauts on board. The researchers' new inventory model helped establish a benchmark for how to better operate the inventory of multi-planetary supply chains. More recently at NASA, the Artemis program will return humankind to the moon within the next decade, including the first woman and person of color. As part of this ambitious lunar expedition, a space station by the name of Gateway will be an outpost orbiting the moon that provides vital support for long-term human return to the lunar surface, 
as well as acting as a key distribution node for deep space exploration. In fact, NASA recently awarded SpaceX the first U.S. commercial contract to deliver cargo, experiments, and other supplies from Earth to Gateway. Mark Weiss, Deep Space Logistics Manager at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, said, This is an exciting new chapter of human exploration. We are bringing the innovative thinking of commercial industry into our supply chain and helping ensure we're able to support crews preparing for lunar surface expeditions by delivering the supplies they need ahead of time. Furthermore, the Gateway will also be home to the Habitation and Logistics Outpost, or HALO, a crew cabin for astronauts to prepare their trip to the lunar surface. It will provide energy storage, power distribution, life support systems, and future stowage modules. In a recent interview with Supply Chain Management Review, Weiss also shared an interesting tidbit about potential future private logistics partners. He said, DHL, UPS, and FedEx are excited about space. They're now attending our conferences. The attention we're getting from companies outside the typical commercial aerospace circles is exciting. I think NASA is on the cusp of a new model and a new way for companies to get involved in space that we've never seen before. As space exploration becomes more privatized, how will traditional supply chain leaders on Earth become involved in this new frontier? Now thinking more futuristically, what will inbound and outbound operations look like for colonies on the Moon, Mars, and beyond? An important consideration to keep in mind about space exploration is a practice called in pseudo resource utilization, or ISRU. What this means is that rather than sourcing materials on Earth and transporting them to other planetary bases, the materials are actually mined and processed at nearby astronomical objects, such as asteroids or moons. For one, this may be more logistically efficient. On Earth, it makes sense to leverage economies of scale by outsourcing to a lower cost market, even if it's on the other side of the world. But at most, that's 25,000 miles away. In space, the distance from Earth to Mars is on average 140 million miles apart. That final mile of the trip is a significant magnitude compared to Earth. A second point is the financial feasibility. The resources required to transport commodities or materials across the solar system, fuel, rockets, labor, would likely be higher than locally sourcing from a nearby asteroid belt. When 3D printing enters the scene, which in itself will transform supply chains here on Earth too, now space supply chains start looking much more advanced than the initial stages of space exploration that we're starting to build out now. One last link to consider in the space supply chain is microgravity manufacturing. On Earth, ever since the inception of the first machines, our manufacturing processes have been designed under the effects of gravity. When you remove that force from the equation, new materials can be manufactured that would otherwise be impossible on Earth. Take for example, Z-Bland fiber optic cables that hold 10 to 15 times more bandwidth than amplified silica fiber optics made on Earth. Made in Space, the name of an actual private company, has already printed over 200 objects on the International Space Station and plans to further expand its manufacturing and supply capabilities in orbit. So, what do you think about the future of space supply chains? Please do share your thoughts in the comments or in the linked discussion threads. If you're interested in learning more about this fascinating topic, I've cited all my sources in the description and added other recommended readings. If you found this video informative and would like to see more from Supply Chain Unpacked, please do subscribe and share. It makes a huge difference. With that, thank you for watching.